Hello and welcome to another AIC video. For anybody who's been following my channel for any length of time knows that I am a ThinkPad enthusiast and it is often the computer I recommend to anybody who's asking me what kind of computer they should be buying next. However, that may be changing soon. Thanks to Lenovo who has been very willing to send me out another review laptop has sent me a ThinkBook. This one happens to be a ThinkBook 2-in-1 Gen 4. I've previously reviewed two other ThinkBooks. One was several years ago. It was a 14-inch with an 8th Gen Core i5 and dedicated graphics. And then the last one that I did was this super ultra-wide that had the dual screens, uh, one next to the keyboard. And while both had the pros and cons, overall, I really liked them. Especially that first one that I reviewed several years ago. I previously did a video showing the internals of the system. I'll link that down below. And now we're going to look at the laptop itself, see how usable it is. But overall, needless to say, I'm actually pretty impressed with this system. First and foremost, this is a two-in-one system, as I said, and so it does the whole 360 hinge thing. That's not something I personally uh, like. However, my wife and children really love touchscreens and love that whole 360 degree hinge. I have a daughter who is an aspiring artist and loves to draw and so having a 360 tablet for her means she has a full computer as well as something that she can do her artwork on. Uh, the screen is super bright. It's a 1920 by 1200 uh, screen resolution meaning it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio which gives you a little bit more height than your typical full HD uh, screen with a thousand to one contrast ratio, 100% sRGB and 300 nits. If you're looking to do any kind of art or graphic, or excuse me, yeah, graphic design, anything like that on here where the color matters, definitely a good screen for it. It's nice and bright. Being that it is a touch screen, it is really high gloss and reflective. That is something that I personally don't like, but it didn't seem to bother my family members who uh, we're taking a look at the system. The touchpad on it is what I feel to be right sized, meaning that I can rest my palms on here and type, and my thumbs are not actually interfering with the trackpad. I've had some laptops in for review and ones I personally own that the trackpad was so big that it actually made using the keyboard quite difficult because you'd be typing along and, and didn't matter how hard you tried, the trackpad would sense that and would move and click and this one doesn't do any of that which i appreciate but it's still really nice and big to give you a full range of motion on that uh, trackpad the keyboard on here is really good if you have used any recent uh, thinkpad it would be very familiar to you uh, it is it has that shorter travel uh, the keys themselves feel a little bit different. The plastic that is used is a little bit different. But the overall feel, location of the keys, everything is very identical to the uh, T14 uh, Gen 5 that I recently reviewed. Uh, it has a nice sound and a nice feel to it. So, uh, so my fingers know exactly where to go. Uh, so if I'm ever using it in low light conditions, I know it's backlit, but you know, if I'm trying to not keep my wife up at night when I'm trying to work on scripts or something, uh, I don't have to worry about typing on here. My hands know where they're at. So if you're coming over from a ThinkPad, it's a great system to move to. I think it is a step above some of the idea pads I've used recently. It's been a while since I've had a higher end ThinkPad, uh, but Compared to those, I think it is a better keyboard. Now the chassis on this laptop is aluminum and it is very stiff. There's almost no chassis flex. There's almost no screen flex. It is a very solid feeling machine when you're using it, whether in traditional mode or in 360 mode. It does make it a little bit heavier than a plastic counterpart. However, that weight gives it a more quality feel and is appreciated in the system. I'd like to go over two complaints I have about the system because no system is perfect. And honestly, this isn't even really a complaint about the system itself. It's complaints about the accessories that come with the system. First one being the pen. 
Now, having a pen is really nice. Like I said, I have a daughter who's an aspiring artist, and so she really enjoyed using the pen on this laptop in a 360 mode uh, to draw. But the problem I have with it is there's really only two places it, it sticks. So it doesn't really stick here on the left-hand side, um, oh, except for it locks the screen uh, along the front edge. Um, it kind of sticks, but that's not really a good place for it. Two places it sticks really well are back here on the left hand side of the screen. It sticks really tight here, but I'm right handed. So having the input device stuck to the left hand side of the screen doesn't really make sense. And then the other place is right here along the right hand side of the laptop. But now you're covering up the micro SD card reader and the power button. So now you're covering up ports. Uh, so that would seem a bit silly to me. The other thing is, is this does not charge with the laptop. It has a USB-C port here in the back. And so you have to charge this separately. So after a few hours of use for my daughter, I forgot to charge it, <laughs> which means that for the most part, we didn't use the pen because I would have to remember to charge it. Uh, there's also no charge indicator or light or anything on here that I could see. And so you don't know how long to leave it unplugged in for, when it's finished charging, whatever. And I don't like leaving things plugged in longer than I have to for the battery. And one of the things that annoys me about this is this is a fairly expensive laptop. Let me show you something here real quick. This is my Lenovo 500W, which I paid $200 for, and it has a recess. Now this is the wrong pen. This is for a Gen 4 and this is a Gen 3, but I couldn't find a Gen 3 pen. Anyways, it recesses into the laptop and it charges in the laptop. And this is a $200 laptop with a $50 pen. Um, and this is, you know, this laptop is over $1,000. So this is a bit silly uh, that it doesn't have a proper recess. And there was room in the laptop for it when I opened it up that it could have gone in there. So that would have been an option. The other thing that I have a complaint with is this right here, the power cord. Let me go ahead and plug it from the base here. So this is the style of power brick that it has. And the cord for this is unacceptably short, far too short for this, for a, a system that you'd be using regularly, especially on the go, where your normal charging locations may not be where you, where it's convenient to plug in at. Uh, this is even so short that it's a foot shorter than my Apple USB-C charger that I have that came with another system. So having a such a short power cord is kind of silly in my opinion. It's actually made this laptop a bit use, hard to use with the charger. I've been using the charger I have for my P14S Gen 2 because it is long enough to, when I'm using my standing desk to be able to be plugged in, this is not. So I can't use my standing desk in standing mode with the charger that came with the laptop. So again, that's not really a knock against the laptop itself. It is a knock against the accessories that come with it. And for such an expensive laptop, uh, they really should be doing better there. And this pen is just going to go in a drawer and it's going to be forgotten about. Unless you're a serious pen user, um, which I honestly, if this was the solution they were gonna use, I would not have sold the pen with the system. I would have saved the system, the 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars, whatever it costs Lenovo to include this. I would have saved that money on the system and sold this as an accessory for those who actually need and want it. Uh, that way they, those who need and want it will have a solution that will work for them and other people just won't immediately lose this. Talking about battery life on the system and charging, uh, the battery life on the system is amazing. Uh, I would get more than a full day of charge on here. I have been using it for work. And so uh, full day charge, not a problem. At least for me, obviously your experience may vary. I use Teams, a lot of web browsers and remoting into my work laptop. So that way, you know, I don't have work stuff on here, but I remote into my work computer from here. So those, that's kind of workload I do on it. Uh, fantastic typing experience. The internet on here is also very fast. And so connections to my work laptop were never an issue. Another really nice thing about this laptop, it is super quiet. I've pulled up a benchmark here. We're just gonna run uh, the CPU mark, push that CPU. 
here a little bit. I'll bring the, give it a second, I'll bring the laptop close to the microphone so you can hear it. But even when being pushed, this system does not get very loud. In day-to-day -day tasks, it's nearly silent. When running heavy CPU and GPU loads, uh, you can hear the fan just barely. It's not intrusive, it's not no uh, noisy. Uh, it's, there's no annoying whine or anything with that. It's a very quiet fan. Um, it had two uh, big heat sinks with a large fan on it, cooling just the CPU. I've seen less beefy cooling systems for systems with dedicated graphics, which this does not have. So it's been running for a second. You just hear almost nothing. There's almost no noise coming out of that uh, that system with it running uh, full tilt on the CPU there. All right, so this is not a gaming laptop. We're gonna go ahead and run just the GTA 5 benchmark on here. Uh, I don't expect people to do much gaming on here on this system. You don't have a dedicated graphics card and for the cost, you would be able to buy a laptop with better gaming performance. But it is nice just to get a general benchmark compared to other systems that you might be looking at. Yeah, and the screen is really reflective there. So in the benchmark, we hover around in most scenes around that 30 frames per second uh, in the system. It does drop down into the teens when there's big explosions and things like that on the screen. And I think if you could install the second, so this only has one memory dim. If you install the second memory dim, so you're running in dual channel mode, play around with the settings a bit. I think you'd be able to get better performance out of this system uh, for the graphics. I don't think, again, I don't think it'll ever be the, your main gaming system, but if for more casual games, I definitely think it could do the job for you. If we go back to the video I did previously on this system, where we have not one, but two 2882 NVMe SSD slots, uh, the Wi-Fi card is upgradable, it has two upgradable RAM slots, the oversized uh, cooling system. It's very serviceable, uh, very um, upgradable for most things. So I think that you, if you're wanting that more traditional ThinkPad upgradability, serviceability, compared to some of the other systems in the last five years or so, you're going to find a much better system here. Because again, you have two uh, SSD slots, you have, you know, upgradable um, Wi-Fi, which isn't even available on the T14 uh, Gen 5 I re reviewed recently. The, the Wi-Fi was soldered to the system board. It did have the two memory up slots upgradable, but it still had soldered, uh, soldered components. This system also has pretty good ports here. We have a USB type A, uh, micro SD cards uh, reader, power button on this side you have your charging port uh, you have two Thunderbolt uh, ports uh, USB type C ports you have another USB port you have your HDMI and a headphone microphone jack so uh, personally I would like to see Ethernet because that is still a port I periodically use but it's not a necessity you have plenty of ports on this system for what the majority of people would be using all in all, I really like this system. If I hadn't recently bought a P14S Gen 2 before I got this system in for review, uh, I might have been tempted to buy this system or something very, one of, one of the uh, ThinkBook systems. I definitely would forgo the, the glossy screen. That's just my personal preference. I would, if I could find one with a matte screen, that would definitely be a contender for me. Uh, I like its upgradability. I like its chassis. The, the aluminum chassis feels amazing. You don't get that um, soft touch that tends to wear pretty uh, quickly on my other systems. Uh, if you notice, most of those will have a vinyl skin on them because of that uh, soft touch surface. Uh, upgradability, serviceability, just overall a very good, well-designed system. And so if 
I had somebody that came to me asking for what their next computer would be. This might go in the list with the ThinkPads. I definitely really like this system. The only thing it's missing is a track point. So anyways, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, leave those down below. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.